I now hand the conference over to Mr. Rahul Agarwal from Incred Equities. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Faizan. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We welcome you all to the fourth quarter of fiscal 21 earnings call of Bigar Industries Limited. We have with us the senior management of the company led by Mithun, managing director, Mr. Ram, the chief operating officer, and Sudarshan Kaskuri, the chief financial officer of the company. We would like to thank the management for giving us this opportunity to hold this call. I now hand over to the management for their initial remarks and we will then take questions. Over to you, Mithun. Thank you. Uh, a very warm welcome to everyone present and thank you very much for joining us today to discuss the operating and financial performance of our company for the fourth quarter and the financial year ended that is March 2021. I am pleased to report a very encouraging financial performance by Vigard in what has been the most challenging period in the recent memory for both human and commercial activity. The pandemic led to nationwide and localized lockdowns during a large part of the year, creating widespread uncertainty with significant bearing on consumer demand as well as supply chains. In this backdrop, we have achieved broad-based growth across product categories and regions. We have continued to expand distribution presence while launching several new products and driving greater focus on online engagement with customers. Our people have shown a lot of deep resolve to keep the wheels turning throughout this period to deliver the possible outcomes. As a result, we saw a good rebound in volumes as the unlocking happened in the second half of the year. We closed FY21 with 8.7% growth in revenues at 2,699 crore during Q4 and expanded to 849 crore. However, Q4 last year was a low base as national lockdown in March 2020 had significantly impacted consumer demand. Raw material cost inflation has remained a challenge. Sharp increases in input prices have had some impact on cross margins. We have, had, we have taken pricing actions to mitigate this to a large extent, but some near-term pressures are likely to continue. In FY21, EBITDA margins expanded by 120 basis points to 11.4 percent. During Q4, our margins increased from 8.4 percent to 12.9 percent on a YOY basis. This is indicative of the performance our business can deliver once the economy opens up and business conditions become more conducive. Profit before tax is higher by 16 percent in FI21 and 136 percent in Q4 FI21. However, the growth in profit after tax was lower at 8 percent and 110 percent respectively due to increase in effective tax rate. The higher tax provision is linked to lower profits from our city manufacturing plants which have a tax advantage. Our city units were under lockdown for an extended period almost up to September of 2020 which disrupted their operations for almost six months. Our net cash position increased from 138 crore to 271 crore based on higher profitability with a stable capital employed. Our core ROC rose to touch 40% in FI21. A strong focus on collections and credit disciplines helped to bring down debtor levels. We have taken a strategic call to hold 15 days of additional inventory as we anticipate demand coming back faster than production capability are resuming. Many of our Tier 2 and Tier 3 vendors may face external disruption due to labor and raw material shortages. Overall, it was a very strong performance in the fourth quarter, continuing on the growth momentum witnessed in Q3. However, as we enter the new financial year, the country has been hit by a more severe second wave of the pandemic. Extensive lockdowns have once again been imposed, which will significantly impact consumer demand during Q1 of FI22. We remain confident that our business built on the edifice of a strong brand, high quality products, widespread distribution and deep cuts consumer relationships have the resilience to come back strongly when the situation normalizes from Q2 onwards. On that note, I would like to thank you once again for your participation and would like to hand over the floor to the moderator for Q&A. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. 
Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Reminder to the participants, anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one at this time. The first question is from the line of Nitin Arora from Access Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, sir, my uh, first question is related to the margin. So, uh, you know, this is the third quarter where we are consistently delivering on a higher double digit margin. And even on an analyzed basis, we have done, uh, you know, way better. Uh, now, uh, how how do you, uh, you know, uh, draw uh, a map here in terms of future uh, margins for us? So, you know, that we wanted to do a double digit always. Uh, demand really came up and, and you've delivered even, I would say, at par with the higher brands or let's say the market leaders uh, kind of a growth. Uh, if you can throw some light, I understand there is commodity pressure. Uh, there could be some mixed benefit because of stabilizer as a category which generally grows 5-6% a year, certainly growing at 14-15%, that also benefits. Uh, or let's say a cable wire also benefits. But generally, in your view, uh, uh, you know, how confident now you are on your margin trajectory, uh, if you can throw some light on that, that would be helpful. See, uh, the best way to look at EBITDA margins, uh, you know, rather than looking at quarterly numbers, is uh, probably to look at the full year numbers. The reason being last year, uh, you know, was an unusual year, um, you know, with, uh, you know, very uh, low first quarter, uh, and then, you know, uh, a decent Q2 and then very strong H2. So I think if you look at the full year, uh, there is, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, decent improvement in EBITDA margin. Um, some of these uh, cost cuts, uh, what we've done is not permanent in nature. For example, uh, we have spent only about uh, 1% or 1.2% or something on KMP uh, or 1.5% instead of the usual 2.5%. So, I think uh, when we uh, look at future, uh, we have to assume that uh, we will come back uh, to spend. Uh, but I can say that if, if revenue growth is, uh, you know, is at that 15%, which is something what we would like to grow every year, I think, uh, you know, 10% uh, or, uh, you know, a little more than 10% is possible. Um, we still don't know whether commodity, uh, you know, self peaked. I mean, um, copper uh, continues to go up. Uh, there is some cooling off in steel prices, but we really don't know. So uh, we'll have to wait and see what really happens. But we have always stated that, uh, you know, 10% negative margin is uh, what we would like to achieve, and we've done that. Um, you know, um, and that, that's that's what we probably will do. Uh, maybe a little more than 10% because um, uh, we have got into some new categories uh, which are, you know, more profitable than traditional categories. So... There is slightly, you know, the that impact also coming in. Uh, so, uh, so that that's what we would like to say. About ten point five percent, ten to ten point five percent is probably sustainable. Got it. This is helpful, sir. And uh, just sir, one on a shorter term question. Uh, you know, uh, I understand. Uh, you know, completely it's difficult to give any guidance how this things will move in post COVID. But generally, a short term question uh, in terms of your utilizations for April and May. Uh, you know, uh, some data on the plant utilizations or and as well as on the inventory movement. So you said, you know, it's a deliberate call that you took of giving more inventory in the market because generally uh, volumes last year also came back very sharply and people were facing supply chain issues. So uh, if you can throw some light as the inventory being optically very high, given no sales are happening or the utilizations are also uh, still about 40-50%, so some inventory is moving towards the secondary sales. If you can throw some on the short-term data points, that's my last question. Thank you. Yeah, uh, Ram, you want to take this? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, I think, uh, you know, um, uh, we we were a bit uh, challenged uh, last year, uh, you know, as we, you know, came off uh, the 
lockdown period uh, the match we were uh, you know relatively thin around inventory and you know some of our factories you know took some time uh, because of the supply chain recovery uh, the associated value chain and uh, we had some significant issues in sikkim you know where we lost because of which we lost significant revenue and the uh, bottom line impact uh, you know which um, we already has uh, highlighted so uh, so we been conscious of this fact and and uh, you know we we felt that you know the, you know uh, there are ways possible and therefore you know we should have adequate buffer in our inventory so we tried to you know build inventory from october but then in you know, a strong uh, december quarter you know extinguish uh, you know whatever you know the inventory improvement that we could create so we continue to build our inventory to you know jan feb and march and you know what is the inventory that's listen as in that thing to what we have built right is in that uh, is uh, predominantly in that period and maybe you know to some degree there may be you know some uh, additional inventory which may arise uh, because of uh, you know slower uh, you know uptake in april you know as the pandemic started to happen here yeah? but fundamentally this uh, 15 day was a planned uh, you know uh, response uh, which uh, we have been trying to you know gradually build uh, from october Uh, to be able to uh, respond to uh, you know fluctuations in uh, market demand and fluctuations on supply uh, value chain and generally uh, in terms of utilization at the plant level in april and may if you can throw some light there and any moment in secondary happened in april and may i mean you must be watching i think uh, you know uh, april you know most of the plants have uh, operated and i think uh, may again you know it would be you know from uh, case to case and uh, fundamentally you know the you know the supply chain would have started to get interrupted you know through may so you can expect that based on raw material availability and what they are holding right you know is what so we try to convert you know existing uh, raw material which was there on our hand uh, into fg uh so i would say april uh, pretty much on course uh, may uh, would be you know uh, what i would say maybe you know it, it may vary from uh, factory to factory for example sikkim is in lockdown uh, last mm-hmm. two weeks have been in lockdown in sikkim so mm-hmm. i think it's uh, you know it's it's a, it's a situation of case to case because uh, the strategies of each um, you know uh, what i would say each district uh, administration mm-hmm. is different right based on their constraints yeah Right. So it will be difficult to give a general answer for this because we have you know seven eight uh, manufacturing sites. So broadly, what right. I would say is you know April is on course. Uh, May would be you know uh, May would be pretty much reflecting uh, the uh, disruption which is happening in the uh, marketplace, right? Uh, uh, because of the lockdown. Yeah. Got it. This is very helpful, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rahul from Hai Tong. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, so, firstly, congratulations on a uh, very strong performance uh, through this difficult time. Uh, I've got two questions. Uh, the first one is, uh, you know, I've seen your depreciation has been uh, continuously increasing over the past seven eight of quarters. Uh, I want to understand your capex plan and how much you spent uh, in twenty one, and how do you see capex, uh, uh, you know, happening over the next two years? So that's the first question. Uh, so I'll just uh, answer this in two parts. One is on the strategy side, and one is on the number side, which Sudarshan will do. Uh, the strategy side, we have stated before, you know, last uh, two three years that we would like to go uh, from a predominantly outsourcing company to, uh, you know, predominantly insourcing uh, the com- uh, strategy. Uh, there are various reasons for this. One is that. uh you know we would like to now start uh, making products uh, which are in the mid premium and premium range uh, which in some cases are not possible to be manufactured by vendor ecosystems because they require uh, huge investment in machinery and that's uh, one of the reasons we have uh, put up a, a factory for fans so that uh, we can play in the uh, liquid uh, painted uh, you know uh, fan market which is you know uh, which is the uh, on the premium uh, end of the uh, spectrum uh, and so as we gain scale in each category as we are becoming uh, more and more experienced in each category as we are uh, you know having enough volumes uh, uh, we typically will move from uh, in outsource model to insource model uh, there is also a good uh, 7 to 10% 7% in some cases 10% increase in uh, gross margins uh, when we move from you know insourcing to outsourcing and maybe 
half of that, uh, you know, the, maybe 40 percent or something, uh, another, you know, uh, of that flowing into EBITDA as well. So, uh, not EBITDA, sorry, uh, even after depreciation. So, even after considering the higher cost of depreciation, higher, uh, you know, cost of organized uh, manpower, uh, we find that uh, producing uh, products in our own factory is making sense in many cases. And after GST, it actually makes sense to own the entire value chain. The guy who owns the most uh, most backward integrated uh, value chain will have the best margins and best ability to uh, respond. The second is um, Indian government has progressively bringing anti-dumping duties uh, against China. Uh, so the, some of these manufacturing uh, units are being set up to replace uh, the um, Chinese imports because uh, we don't have a vendor ecosystem for some of these categories. Like uh, if you look at pedestal fans, there is no vendor ecosystem available in India. So uh, every company has to go and set up own factories. Or maybe we are not happy with the kind of quality offered by Indian vendors uh, in that particular uh, segment. So this is the reason we are uh, you know, setting up the uh, factories. Um, so you want to uh, talk about the capex, uh, you know, number? Yeah. And yeah, sure. Uh, yeah. So uh, that is the thinking behind, uh, you know, setting up on manufacturing, as you can explain. Uh, apart from that, also the new categories that we enter entail some significant investment in malls as well. So that's the other part of the capex. Mm, in the recent past, the um, came, I mean, water heater plant and the fans plant, which we have set up. So those were uh, big capex investments, say roughly about 40 crores each. Uh, going forward, uh, we would expect capex to be at around, you know, say 60, 70 crores a year. Uh, that's what I would expect. Okay. Thanks. Oh, this is very helpful, you know. The second question I've got uh, is, you know, uh, regarding South and non South. Now, in the fourth quarter, we've seen a very strong growth uh, in the in the non South, you know, at 70% now. So I wanted to understand, you know, is there a specific reason or effort that you made uh, during the particular quarter, or is it more because of you know, various states being locked out at different points in time? No, I think it's you now, you know, point number two, you know, see the last year, uh, you know, it's not like, uh, you know, we were, um, uh, you know, we were not um, no, encouraging our people to uh, travel and uh, meet uh, retailers and distributors uh, because we are, uh, we were, fearing for the safety of uh, not only our people, but even, uh, you know, the, the the staff of our distributors and all that. So it's not like we made any extraordinary attempt to increase. It's just that in the first uh, quarter of last year, uh, places like Kerala, uh, you know, had a more uh, severe and extended lockdown, uh, mm -hmm. you know, than some of the other places. And uh, the, the enforcement, see, it's not only the lockdown, it's also the enforcement of lockdown. Although every uh, state government talks about a lockdown, the degree of enforcement varies from state to state. Uh, you know, last year, uh, you know, many of the rural markets uh, in non south uh, they were operating uh, like uh, you know uh, as normal uh, because the local authorities uh, were not that uh, keen on enforcing some of these things. Uh, there is also in some states the state government classified uh, motor pump uh, as an essential commodity, so pump shops were open. In some states, they said. Uh, fan is an essential commodity, so they open. So it depends. I mean, so I think uh, don't look at the quarterly number. Maybe a yearly number is the best way to judge. And even in the yearly number, there is a one or two percent increase by non south. Uh, non south has grown almost double uh, the rate of south. So that is the general trend uh, in which it will go in the future. Sure. sure. Thank you very much and all the very best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Aditya Bagul from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman team. Uh, congratulations on a uh, very good set of numbers. Uh, so just digging a little more deeper into the, the geographic split between South and non-South, uh, while you, you elaborated that there will be a huge diversion, uh, would like to understand in terms of absolute numbers, do you think that South uh, as a as a segment has or a geography has grown at six seven percent and and our competitors also have grown at that rate or or uh, do you think that there is some uh, market share gain or loss? So I think uh, you know generally when we looked at uh, you know our numbers uh, when we looked at uh, you know when we talked with our uh, partners on the ground 
uh, and when we look at our uh, numbers of appear, uh, one thing is very clear: there is a, a more uh, f- you know whenever such kind of uh, pandemic or something has happens, uh, the, the retailers are keen to uh, you know stock only well-known brands. Uh, customers are keen only uh, to buy uh, brands uh, that are able to offer good after-sales support um, and buy products uh, that are uh, you know got good quality. So I think. Uh, I think uh, there is uh, also a small shift happening uh, towards the organized. So, uh, you know, maybe local brands uh, have not been able to supply, uh, you know, because uh, they have less uh, formal uh, supply chain. Uh, many of them uh, are competing on the basis of price. They have lower cost uh, because they use migrant labor and uh, they don't, you know, pay any EF, you know, ESI, PF, et cetera, and all that. So. A lot of these small guys, um, you know, because there was very little social security being provided uh, by them to their factories, uh, workers, uh, many of the migrants left, uh, you know. So there there has been more severe supply chain disruptions for smaller guys. The bigger guys also have better relationship with suppliers. Uh, you know, we are all able to be first in the queue when uh, an unlock happens. So all of this uh, would have, uh, you know, so I'm guessing that uh, all the branded companies, uh, larger companies would have grown. Uh, yeah. Right. So, so uh, if I were to understand this, I think we've gained market share vis-a-vis uh, the unorganized segment, but versus our organized peers, the market market share remains more or less status quo. Is that? Uh, it may be status quo. We would have. I, I, you know, I don't want to talk about it too much. But we would have gained. Like for example, uh, we know for a fact that in France uh, we have gained market share uh, because of okay. uh, you know we have launched some products but uh, we have we know for a fact we have lost market share in water heaters because our factory was shut so so you know in some categories uh, we have won some categories we have lost understood sir uh, so my second question is is uh, to do with more of, of the price hike that we've taken um, while you did allude to certain strategic price hike can you quantify what was the number in in q4 and probably what you're likely to do in q1 uh, Sudarshan, you want to take this? Uh, yeah. So in in Q4, uh, we have taken price hikes progressively across various categories, and uh, depending on the category, uh, you know, it ranges uh, anywhere between five to ten percent. Yeah, the kind of price hikes that have landed so far. Mm, there are some more to do, and uh, in again certain specific categories, you know, and batteries and so on. There is a little more pricing action that is yet to be done. Um, if I were to quantify that at an overall company level, uh, that would add up to about maybe 1.5%, something like that, around that much of pricing action would to be taken. In Q1? Yeah, in Q1 or Q2, it depends, it depends on you know, when we are able to land it. Understood, sir. Understood, sir. That's, that's uh, very helpful. Uh, thank you so much and wish you all the best for the quarters to come. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Aniruddha Joshi from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, sir, uh, uh, the basic question uh, on uh, uh, what has been the growth in e-commerce as well as the rural platforms. Uh, also, uh, can you indicate uh, the non-South markets have done well, but uh, if within that, if you can West uh, uh, as well as North uh, region separately, uh, uh, better. Sudarshan, uh, you want to take it? Uh, yeah, Econ is doing 40%. Um, the second part of the question, I missed some. Were you saying uh, region split for non south? So, uh, e commerce growth as well as the rural uh, sales growth as well, and the region wise growth rates east, north, south, three regions. Uh, rural, I don't have a hand, but I can give you regions. Okay. Uh, region wise, uh, yeah, north uh, north grew at about eleven percent, west at nineteen, and east at seven. North at eleven. Hello. West west to nineteen, east to seven. Okay. Yeah. 
thank you thanks thanks uh, for the details thanks thank you the next question is from the line of charanjit singh from dsp mutual fund please go ahead uh hello sir uh, my first question is specifically on the fan segment uh you know uh, when you have uh, you know uh, uh, regain some market share so in terms of the product portfolio launch in which you know price brackets you would have launched and uh, this uh, you know gaining market share this has been uh, in southern or the northern market uh rami on kg yeah i think uh, you are referring to mithun's observation on some uh, market share gain in fans right so they are right. that's right. in the yeah, yeah 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 that's in the mid premium segment and uh, uh that's a new launch and you know we've been able to uh, make a decent entry into that uh, category and that's been on incremental business on our current business here okay so uh, what price range will be this uh, you know mid premium segment as per our uh uh this should be you know like uh, 3000 uh, 3500 3, plus 3000 to 3000 3000 plus to say 3000 to 5000 yeah, like yeah customer price yeah 3000 around 3000 customer price okay sir okay and <clears throat> so we are also hearing you know some of uh, uh, the very new entrants who are actually scaled up very well in uh, fans business you know adding capacities uh, Uh, which can suggest the uh, you know southern market so uh, any thoughts about that you know can that impact our you know market share whatever we have right now in the uh, in the fan space uh, no, our uh, yeah 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 uh, i think you know our fan business is uh, still in the developing stage right so i think you know it's uh, too early for us to worry about uh, market share loss right so we should actually be you know looking at Uh, you know what is the room for us to grow uh, that's uh, fundamentally because you know we have opportunity to you know uh, expand uh, you know uh, the product range breadth and also the uh, distribution breadth so i think you know and also the uh, product portfolio health also we have opportunity to significantly enhance you know with our competitors so i think uh, we have a lot of room for you know creating you know improvements and enhancements and all these three axes right so So I think um, I wouldn't worry too much about uh, it's a fairly large market. Fan is a fairly large market, and I think even within that, you know, post you know this demon GST and now these two years of COVID, I think the unorganized sector is also getting you know significantly impacted. Although that is very low in South, you know, which is where your question is related to. Uh, so I'm just saying that you know uh, that's not. Uh, I mean, I don't see that as a near-term concern. Yeah? I think because we have a lot of. Uh, leave us to press to grow the business okay and so in the initial remarks we talked about you know some of the costs will come back and ant spend tends to be one of the you know factor where we may see you know the come back so in terms of fi21 what was the, the overall percentage of sales and how do we see going forward in fi22 uh, ant spending oh uh, so ant you know uh, you know percentage i asked to the student banker i don't have it with me right now uh Uh, as far as the as far as the long term uh, you know uh, amp spend uh, you know trajectory uh, it will be around 2.5% uh, which is what it's been in the last uh, uh, few years uh, barring covid uh, year uh, so you know uh, if we have a normal year that is what it should be okay that's all for this fy21 amp spend was 1% compared to 2.3 last year Okay. Okay, sir. So this will normalize uh, to uh, to two point three percent in FI twenty two. That that is the way we should look at. Uh, yeah, but we are also we don't know how the year is going to be, right? So you know, for example, uh, I don't see any company spending on ANP at least in the first quarter. Uh, so 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 that quarter, uh, you know, spend will not happen. So we'll have to wait and see. Uh, you know, if we are having a if if there is a sense of uh, you know, so it will be quarter to quarter. You know. Uh, uh the first quarter number may not uh, hit i mean empty spend although we have spent uh, money in april uh may i don't see us spending any money uh and june also we'll be busy with uh, you know uh, uh, restarting operations because i'm expecting so so it depends so we'll be, we can't predict what's going to happen actually in fi22 uh in terms of empty spend so we'll be case to case and how you know so once we gain confidence that the market is back to normative levels uh, sales is back to normative levels uh, we will spend and so will others
ओके सर ग्रेट सर तो थैंक्स फॉर टेकिंग माय क्वेश्चन दैट्स ऑल फॉर मी थैंक यू थैंक यू रिमाइंडर टू द पार्टिसिपेंट्स एनी वन हु विशेस टू आस्क अ क्वेश्चन मे प्रेस स्टार एंड वन द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज फ्रॉम द लाइन ऑफ आदित्य भारतीय फ्रॉम इन्वेस्ट टेक प्लीज गो अहेड आई गुड आफ्टरनून सर so last year we had lockdown starting from march till uh, uh, towards the end of march which means that the usual in- inventory stuffing that takes place hadn't happened uh this time around because march was usual and because we were seeing very strong growth uh, uh, and prices were also going up i presume that dealers would have stocked stocked up uh, on the inventory side from that perspective do you expect that inventory in the channel is a lot higher than where it was uh, uh, at, at a similar time last year and therefore even when the markets open up primary sales may not increase at the same pace as they did last year so uh, we are monitoring yeah ram monitoring yeah yeah i think uh, last year march the trade inventory would have been high because the lockdown started from 23rd and uh, they would not have had the opportunity to and normally you know they stock up uh, for april uh, you know uh, in, in anticipation of april so the the trade inventory was higher uh, last year you know at the end of march i think uh, trade inventory now uh, you know is uh, normalized and uh, you know possibly you know a little lower than you know what uh, traditionally would have been the normal inventory you know in trade yeah so i think uh, contrary to uh, you know what we had like, what you have what you are saying uh, i think the trade inventory has actually not gone up uh, so what uh, what it means is that uh, whatever we have sold to the trade has got sold off that is one and uh, they are also not uh, stocking uh, of course there has been some up stocking due to price increase and all that but the overall trade inventory is not very high uh, is what we what we believe because uh, because if that was the case uh, we, we would have had trouble collecting you know the money and it's sir um and so this time around uh, given that covid incidents is much more wide spread uh, there is a possibility that uh, smaller towns may not uh, uh, see the same kind of demand revival as they saw last year uh and from that perspective it would be interesting to understand how exactly is our sales mix between uh, tier 1 towns metros uh as well as uh, uh, smaller towns and rural areas so one uh, general trend has been that uh, you know one of the uh, one of the uh, one of the things has been that because of interest rates are falling and uh, uh, construction costs are going up significantly we are seeing a lot of people uh, including uh, in may when there is a lockdown scrambling to buy apartment without even actually seeing an apartment so uh, this is what builders tell us that actually most builders are having decent sales even during lockdown and at least in many states construction activities are uh, classified as essential and they are ongoing so uh, so i actually believe that uh, Uh, you know uh, uh, there is going to be uh, you know some kind of uh, reduction in uh, you know trade inventory uh, faster than what has happened last time because in last time there was no activity happening for two and a half months this is one so i think uh, we'll have to wait and see uh, you know we are having a lot of cases that is true uh, but um, you know it's not like a big percentage of the population is uh, you know the cases are a big percentage of the cases are being fatal Uh, the number of cases are very high yes uh, but uh, uh, you know that percentage uh, you know of fatality is still uh, you know low and the tendency in the overall number is not uh, very high comparing to the rural population so we'll have to wait and see how this affects uh, rural demand uh, last year yes when the unlock happened uh, rural uh, was leading with sales but within a month uh, even cities uh, sales uh, was back to normal the only issue was with modern trade uh, because they were located in mall and malls were not open for a long time so other than that uh, you know uh, individual shops in the cities uh, were doing decent sales even last year so uh, so we'll wait and see i think uh, we are optimistic i don't think there will be a huge uh, widespread demand destruction as uh, one feared uh, you know uh, in, the, in the beginning of covid sure sir this is very helpful thanks a lot thank you the next question is from the line of mayank bandari from nirmal bank securities please go ahead yeah thanks for the opportunity uh, sir uh, first question is related to the electronic segment 
uh, we have seen uh, pretty high uh, margins in last two quarters, Q3 and Q4. So, is it related to? Uh, I mean, what exactly it is related to? Uh, can you just throw some light on that? Okay, uh, Sudarshan, you want to take this? Q4 we saw stabilizers growing, you know, uh, substantially. So, you know, uh, stabilizer did well in Q4. That's one of the primary reasons for uh, for margins in the electronic segment. Um, when that was for Q4, for full year, uh, uh, it was actually an unfavorable mix. Okay, so what kind of margin we can argue to be sustainable in this segment? Um, for, I mean, at an EBITDA level, like you know, Nitin mentioned earlier, uh, you know, double digit, ten percent plus will definitely be sustainable. Okay, and sir, uh, in terms of your uh, is, uh, your your uh, acquisition of the non-controlling stake in a battery starter uh, okay. in January 2021. Sir, how has uh, things been? Like, uh, uh, what is your target there? Uh, can you throw some light? Uh, Ram, you want to take this? Yeah. So, I think, um, you know, as uh, we had uh, highlighted, right, you know, uh, our focus is on uh, the technology which is being incubated by that startup for uh, potential application for uh, some of our, uh, you know, uh, you know, whatever, for, for some of our uh, business lines, right? So, that's our focus. Right now, you know, uh, you know, the startup is in uh, technology development stage. So, and, uh, you know, uh, so, you know, it's more on the, uh, you know, what I would say, uh, you know, in the latch stage, right? And uh, it's, you know, far from uh, commercial production at this stage. Yeah. So, uh, like, uh, as, I, as I see in the presentation, or marketing materials, uh, you is very less in uh, DUPS and the battery segment, it's 4 to 6%. So, what is kind of, uh, like, is there any strategy, uh, strategical goal you have uh, in mind to increase the market share there? Uh, see, uh, we, okay, uh, I think, you know, uh, there are, you know, there are a few categories, you know, where you know, our, uh, you know, shares are, uh, you know, what I would say, uh, at, see, we are a late entrant into this category, right? I think we got into this around 2010-2011. So we are eight or nine years into this industry, and you know, and uh, we currently hold uh, four to five percent share as you spoke. So, uh, so that's just to give a context of you know why we are where we are because you know we are uh, you know relatively young in this uh, category. And I think our focus uh, fundamentally here, uh, you know, by the initial part of our launch has been to, you know, develop category understanding and, you know, make sure that we are able to participate in the various segments, right? Uh, last uh, three, four years, you know, we've been fundamentally, you know, uh, doing extensive work, right? Uh, to, you know, uh, what I would say, deeply participate in the value chain, right? You know, owning all the designs and, you know, uh, getting uh, involved deeply into uh, sourcing of uh, you know components uh, so that we are able to be more efficient and competitive and uh, profitable. The last uh, couple of years, you know, our focus has been fundamentally to you know improve our profitability in this business so that you know when the business scales up, right, it is healthy and uh, positive for the organization because you know at uh, you know at current level it is already about uh, 12 to 13 percent of our uh, you know uh, business right. So, so our focus has been, you know, fundamentally, you know, after the initial launch and entry and building of platform has been to, you know, shape the business for profitable growth, right? And I think, you know, part of that we are looking at, you know, various aspects. Uh, so I think, you know, the design part of it and the sourcing value chain part of it is something that, you know, we are now in the, uh, you know, design we have executed. Sourcing is what we are in the course of, you know, executing. And uh, so our focus uh, primarily will be to build a healthy business uh, to start with, right? Yeah, okay, thanks. thanks. And lastly, sir, I just want to understand, like, in terms of the distribution uh, touch points, how much you would have increased in last year? Uh, so we had highlighted about 40,000 to dealers we had uh, in the, by the end of FY20. So is there any number around that for FY21? See, uh, last year, as you know, you know, a good part of the year, uh, you know, was, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, gone in, in the lockdown and all that. 
and uh, like i mentioned earlier also our focus last year was uh, you know to ensure the uh, safety and health of our employees and uh, safety and health of our channel partners so we also did not encourage uh, traveling unless uh, you know otherwise it was an emergency or it was really required for you know someone to visit the market uh, because uh, uh, we knew looking at other countries that there is a possibility of a second wave so we did not uh, you know we only we did not so so adding retailers uh, during you know through a phone call uh, etc would be very difficult uh, having said that we have increased uh, some number of channel partners uh, you know in new categories like for example uh, we have launched uh, you know newly launched air cooler is a new category for us so uh, you know sales have uh, you know gone up 30 40% in the category uh, you know aided by increase in uh, channel partners uh, we have also probably increased uh, penetration in switches uh, they may not be new channel partners they may be our existing uh, switch gear or wire uh, retailers so um, i wouldn't say we uh, you know we increased the number of uh, touch points significantly last year because owing to these challenges uh in the current year also you know we probably won't take a target to increase the number of retailers uh, until you know there is a clear uh, you know uh, sense uh, unless like let's say we are able to uh, make sure that a significant part of our front line staff is uh, vaccinated okay okay thank you one 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 last question sir sir is there a difference between ebitda margin in non south and south geography right yeah there is a difference uh, sudarshan you want to take uh, yeah the gross margins are comparable but uh, given the scale difference uh, at an ebitda level yeah the uh, non south is lower than south okay okay thank you thank you very much that's it from my side thank you the next question is from the line of rahul agarwal from incredit equities please go ahead Yeah, hi. I just had two questions. Uh, good evening. Uh, firstly, uh, Mithun, 2020 obviously gave a lot of confidence in terms of demand recovery post the COVID unlock, and a uh, lot of us on the street thought that okay, this this demand looks structural and it will continue. Obviously, 2021 has its own share of hiccups. But overall, would you have any thoughts around this or any lead indicators? Would you track internally, which essentially gives some sense of sustainable demand uh, adjusted for covid over next two years let's say 12 to 24 months would you help me on that please so i think um, you know at this point it will be very difficult to you know give uh, you know particular number of guidance uh, but i think uh, you know we, uh, we what we are doing is uh, we have planned a scenario based planning for the current year so we have built in uh, you know various scenarios that are possible in terms of demand uh there are optimistic optim- optimistic scenarios and there are you know pessimistic scenarios so uh, but even in the most pessimistic scenario uh, we don't see a huge uh, you know what do you call uh, uh, widespread demand destruction that happens so uh, that is what we have internally built and we are working on that uh, as far as the uh, indicators are concerned um, you know when we uh, talk with uh, you know for example like i mentioned earlier on another question um retail, uh, the the real estate companies and the builders are at least the the organized ones and you know the rare earth certified ones are all talking about uh, even in may uh, they seem to have sales uh, you know while um, you know customers are not able to physically visit the site and all that uh, people are still booking apartments so uh, it looks like um, you know after many years it does look like the real estate industry after being in doldrums are is slowly coming back uh, which is a good news because a lot of our products uh, like electrical wires such as switch gear fan etc are going to you know uh, part of it is definitely going into you know buildings uh, you know so that that seems to be a uh, very good news and if that's happening um, you know that means that the demand destruction uh, is uh, the demand is, uh, it looks like it's intact so that that's one indicator i can give you uh, you know which is happening um so so yeah so we are optimistic going forward got it and uh, one question i had with sudarshan on the balance sheet so inventory obviously has gone up a bit which you said is intentional uh, in terms of extra stocking this time what creditors have also gone up to 470 crores uh, any specific mm-hmm. reason for that mm, no it's a natural consequence of uh, having higher inventory 
Okay, so it's more to do with just the inventory increase yeah. equal to credit increase. That's all. Yeah, so we just have to uh, just have to see the total cash conversion cycle together. So, nothing okay. unusual. Got that. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sonali Salgaonkar from Jeffries India. Please go ahead. So thank you for the opportunity and congratulations on a great set of numbers. So my first question is regarding your distribution network. Could you give a ballpark uh, understanding of how much of that would be towards rural catering in rural and how much of that would be urban centric? And also similarly for South versus non South. Uh, okay, Ram, you want to take this? Uh, sorry, can you repeat the question again? I lost the second line of it. Uh, yeah. So, so uh, you know, a sense, a broader sense of uh, the segmented distribution network in firstly rural versus urban, and secondly south versus non-south. I think, um, uh, look, I think you know this is uh, fundamentally going to be a consequence of you know how the pandemic plays out, right? Uh, now, what uh, what we observed initially is that the urban areas were, uh, you know, uh, significantly getting impacted, particularly from, let I would say, the last 10 days of, uh, last 15 days of March and going through into, uh, you know, the months of April, right? And uh, what we are seeing uh, post mid April, uh, you know, this is uh, spreading gradually to uh, smaller towns and, you know, rural areas. And um, I think fundamentally, you know, it will it will follow that uh, is what we feel. Similarly, what we found, right, you know, is uh, uh, you know the pandemic spread uh, was initially slower uh, in the south and east, and you know the markets remained open longer, you know, in these places yeah, compared to uh, west or uh, you know north. And uh, what we are now finding is that you know, and as you can see, you know, it's uh, right now you know uh, stronger. Uh, you know, the numbers are stronger in uh, you know uh, south, for example, right? So I think you know it's uh, fundamentally going to follow the you know uh, the evolution and development of uh, the uh, what I would say is the pandemic, right? So I think you know you should see that uh, hand in hand with how the pandemic will evolve, right? Okay. Understood, I hope it sir. answers your question, right? So, Understood, sir. Yeah. Then secondly, uh, on the uh, you know uh, kitchen appliances and the switch gear, these have been our focus categories across for uh, you know a few quarters now. So going forward, say in the medium term, uh, over the next three to five years, uh, how much uh, do you expect the product mix uh, to be contributed by these? That's my last question. Thank you. So, uh, I, uh, uh, I mean, we have a portfolio of, uh, you know, emerging uh, categories, right? It's uh, not just uh, kitchen and uh, switch gear, but, you know, like we have switches, uh, we have air coolers, uh, we have also got into water purifiers. So, uh, so I would, you know, look at it from, uh, you know, I, I would look at it, you know, in that sense. And, you know, obviously, you know, uh, right now, uh, I think, you know, we are limited in our ability to scale uh, some of these categories as that will require us to enter, uh, you know, newer uh, accounts. And uh, fundamentally, you know, suppose you look at uh, something, you know, uh, we are fundamentally focusing on uh, existing uh, channel and existing business partners, you know, for last year and current year, right? Uh, in our strategic plan, yes, you know, they, they, they are important drivers for our uh, top line growth and uh, margin improvement. But I think, you know, depending on how COVID will play out, our ability to achieve uh, the same uh, will be indicated, right? I don't want to give a guidance in terms of, you know, what kind of uh, lift and support that will come. But uh, sufficient to say that, you know, it, it, it should be able to contribute, you know, uh, you know, in a meaningful way, like, you know, let's say, you know, one percentage or two percentage points, you know, uh, on, you know, uh, top line or bottom line. So that's certainly, so it, it will certainly, the expansion of this portfolio will certainly have an impact on uh, the margin profile and the growth of the organization. Yeah. But uh, the pace at which we will be able to do it, I think, you know, the, the, the pandemic is still to play out fully. And uh, as Mithun uh, right, rightly highlighted, right, you know, we have been focused right from the beginning of the pandemic, right, uh, in, in making sure that our people are uh, protected. And so 
Uh, our focus has not been to you know expand uh, you know to newer counters and you know newer geographies, but rather to you know uh, utilize uh, the opportunity within our existing value chain for the improve the penetration of the products. Yeah? Sure. There are also Sorry. supply chain challenges. There are also see, these are also smaller categories. So there are also supply chain challenges. Uh, you know, which emerge because in uh, some of these categories, you know, we have outsourced uh, supply chains also. So I think uh, may not be right time to develop a point of view on how this will go. Of course, needless to say that you know, uh, it, 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 it's our strategy, and you know, it has been part of our long term plan uh, to use uh, these as the drivers for. Our growth of uh, you know business growth and profitability, but I think the realization of that pretty much depends on how the you know pandemic will evolve. Sure, sir. And uh, if I may ask just one more, how much percentage of our overall production is outsourced currently? That's it from my side. Uh, so that's it. Um, outsourcing is just about fifty percent. It's come down from its sixty uh, percent or level to close to fifty. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Renu Bait from IIFL. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, good evening, sir. Um, so my two questions would be first, I uh, wanted to check, given that uh, the second uh, wave of pandemic is that hit um, the core southern markets and there is a bit of disruption. So the new product launches that we had planned, large kitchen appliances segment, uh, where are we uh, with respect to launch of those products? Um, are they on track by the festive season or there would be a likely postponement of the product launches? So uh, the, the, the newer categories within kitchen appliances like, uh, you know, chimneys, uh, hobs, hoods, uh, uh, you know, and water purifiers, they are only being sold uh, through our e-commerce partners and they are right. uh, doing well. Uh, um, so we are not, yes, so there are some supply chain challenges, uh, you know, all the water purifier is made completely in India. The uh, chimney business, um, you know, is imported. So, uh, you know, there is uh, fragility in the supply chain there. Um, but otherwise, uh, they have, uh, you know, scaled up well. Uh, I think uh, the first six months, uh, uh, in uh, e-commerce uh, part, uh, partners platforms is spent on, uh, you know, uh, is spent on, uh, you know, creating a base of, uh, you know, happy customers, uh, uh, which is very important for referrals and, you know, ratings. And I think both these categories have achieved that, especially water purifier is doing exceedingly well. Uh, and now we will uh, start accelerating sales, uh, you know, uh, because we have not uh, done any promotion for this category yet, uh, because we wanted the, uh, you know, uh, the first part of the entry for e-commerce is, you know, building a base of, uh, you know, happy customers, which has now happened in the last six months. So uh, they're doing well. Uh, and uh, I think uh, uh, in this time, for example, uh, you know, e-commerce is one of the few ways in which someone can buy a product in some of the states, although not all the states are permitting, uh, you know, non-essential e-commerce uh, deliveries. Got it. Uh, secondly, as in this year, if you see the dividend payout has stepped up from the typical 25-27% range to 40% level. Uh, so does that mark a shift in terms of uh, the dividend payout policies given that cash flows have now started to improve for us? Uh, no, the payout uh, percentage of net profit is still something around 26%, uh, if, I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, we're still at that 25-26% only. It's not going up. Okay, then maybe I would have made some uh, mistakes because I saw yeah, that 45% now. Uh, the uh, 1.2. Okay, okay 1.2 and then there was an interim of 0.9 as well there. So, no, okay. Uh, was yeah. Yes, uh, 1.9 was for the previous year, uh, which was about, uh, you know, about 20%. That's gone up to about 26%. Um, sure, I'll just correct yes, you. Uh, there are mistakes at my end. Um, see, I think. Uh, uh, sorry, I'll just make one more point. I think our cash flows has been, you know, going up. Uh, you know, last uh, two three years. Uh, so we have always mentioned that, uh, you know, with the increase in cash flows, uh, you know, uh, and anyway, our dividend policy is also stating that we will pay, uh, you know, up to twenty five percent or even more. Uh, you know, if we don't find this for the cash, so uh, it's around twenty six percent. 
got it i think my bad i've done some mistake there uh, and lastly uh, broadly if, if you look at last 6 months uh, with some pent up demand and as in good volume accretion coming through our electronic segment had seen very sharp increase in profitability i understand that's not a sustainable margin but on a very steady state basis given that uh, in this category we have the market leaders we have reasonable uh, volume and pricing power and as uh, price increases might follow in the first half of the financial year uh, are we seeing or can we expect the sustainable margins in this category uh, the way they have moved up from 12 13% to 16 17% uh, can they inch closer to 20% levels uh, from a 2 to 3 year perspective or uh, is there a catch here see um, what has happened in the case of electronics is that if you look at the full year um, you know the sale of air conditioner stabilizers has decreased i'm talking about the full year not just the q4 yeah uh, and uh, and it has been you know the sale of uh, you know lower kva or television uh, stabilizers has gone up uh, you know it could uh, because um, you know we have uh, you know the, the sale of tvs has had gone up you know uh, during the pandemic year um mm-hmm. so the profitability of the tv stabilizer uh, business is higher than the uh, you know air conditioner stabilizer business so i think the the percentage of margin is should be seen as as more of a mix uh, you know uh, issue uh, for the full year rather than uh, you know so we will go back to our when we go the mix goes back to normal uh, the margins uh, also should go back to you know normal but uh, that yeah So basically, in a normal year where the air conditioners sell well, the margins will come back to normal. But if air conditioner market doesn't do well, uh, then uh, one sh- can assume that overall the margin profile could be relatively better. Uh, so see, this uh, last year was an unusual year. I mean, you know, we are in a warm country, so I don't expect that. See, when air conditioner stabilizer doesn't perform, uh, it actually impacts the entire company. It impacts the stabilizer business as well because. a conditioner a uh, stabilizer contributes nearly 50 to 60% of the value uh, revenues so although the margins are uh, you know slightly lower than the uh, you know other stabilizers uh, it is important that we grow the air conditioner stabilizer business as well so uh, you are right in saying that the percentage looks higher but in terms of absolute profit it may be low right and so my last question as in you did t- uh, talk about that internally you worked up with various scenarios of covid uh, worst case as well as the best case scenario uh, given that last year we were significantly impacted because of supply chain uh, this year even if we look at um, the base case or slightly bearish case scenario um, a, a double digit or a mid teens growth should still be fairly reasonable uh, for you as in uh, or you think our assumptions could be a bit uh, misguided here so i think uh, i think you know this year uh, again uh, you know we are not giving out a guidance per se but we have built uh, some you know scenario based uh, models internally uh, i think uh, you know i think the i think uh, uh, just like last year you know we should not expect that there will be uh, you know large scale demand destruction so i don't think that will happen uh there could be you know we could have one quarter of a very challenging quarter and uh, we could have one uh, you know okay quarter and then we could have a very good uh, quarters uh, in the last two quarters so that's what what we should do uh, i'm not giving out a guidance per se i think uh, you know we we'll, we should probably take it uh, as it comes and see you know how each quarter goes so, uh, mithun if i may add a couple of uh, points right so i think it's also a question of you know whether you know we will see you know one cycle or two cycles also and uh, like uh, what has happened uh, you know so we seeing a second cycle but probably the impact of that has come in april and may this year Uh, mm-hmm. so i think you know so when the timing of that cycle is happening is also a factor right if it happens in october november december you have one situation if it extends and you know into you know april may or you know march like you know it did the last time then it's a different scenario so i think uh, you know it's 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 actually difficult to uh, judge right so you can have hypothesis for you know how many cycles will be there and when in the year uh, they will come and there will be attendant consequence on the business and also what is the depth of each cycle or impact of each cycle so it's okay. really you know uh, it's it's really hard uh, to have a point of view because you know it's like you know you're going to develop a point of view on you know how the epidemic will or the pandemic will evolve right so yeah that nobody can take a view at this point of time honestly exactly yeah so exactly yeah. that's why i'm saying there is no yeah. there is no meaning uh, 
there may be like some view on pandemic we can take and we may have an internal point of view but we are not uh, you know we are nowhere near being you know even a well informed uh, forget uh, being an expert but even a well informed uh, guy on uh, you know uh, you know people on you know how the pandemic is uh, evolving right uh, you know because we are not epidemiologists right so that's I, that's how i would put it yeah? so you know it may be possible for us uh, for a given situation to say you know what could happen right but uh, it's not possible for us to say what that situation will be and that's where the scenarios were being developed to basically understand you know okay if you know it goes this way what levers we press if it goes this way what levers we press right like that some you know some five six scenarios we have developed right? that's i think what we come out of the thinking sure sure uh, thank you so much sir and all the best thank you thank you Ladies and gentlemen we will take the last question from the line of Anirudh Joshi from ICICI Securities please go ahead uh yeah hello sir thanks uh, again uh, so just one question can you indicate the channel wise revenue breakup for uh, uh, FY21 so e-commerce csd modern trade and then the uh, offline channel uh to darshan or ram either one of you can uh, e-commerce was 65 crore um csd we don't darshan can i uh, can i give a thin uh, number right so i think you know let's uh, break it into three uh, broad pieces right so there is you know organized trade you know which would be probably be you know e-commerce you know modern trade regional uh, specialty or csd cpc yeah, that's one cluster i would put it which are you know which are organized this is organized trade i think this may be about right. 16 17% for us yes yeah? uh, you know in the uh, non wires uh, part of the business yeah and uh, you know uh, you know as far as uh, you know that the rest would be a traditional trade right i think that would be a, you know easier uh, you know uh, way to look at it yeah? okay okay sure sir yeah so uh, yeah that was the question thank you ladies and gentlemen that was the last question for today incred wishes to vigard family i would now like to hand the conference over to mr mithun chittipal chittilapalli for closing comments um thank you all uh, for uh, participating in our conference call and i uh, would like to thank incred uh, for hosting this call thank you very much thank you ladies and gentlemen on behalf of incred equities that concludes this conference thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines